Good morning, traders. Welcome to Wednesday of this beautiful week. Make sure to swing over to ssftg.com slash brief to grab your morning brief levels. Before we jump on in, as always, we need to check to see the news and everything else that's going on today so that we're not taken by surprise or taken off guard by anything. So looking at the news for this morning, earlier this morning, there's not really a whole lot, just a bunch of small news announcements until 8.30. 8.30, we have the core durable goods orders for December. The forecast is 0.5%. Uh, that's the first large news announcement. Along with that, at 8.30, we have a medium news announcement with the durable goods orders that's forecasted at 0.9%. Today's Wednesday, so we have the crude oil inventories that's forecasted at 0.43 million. Uh, and we'll look at the API in just a second here. And then in the afternoon session, we have 1400 and 1430 with the FOMC statements, the Fed interest rate decisions forecasted at 0.25% and the FOMC press conferences. Looking at crude oil inventories, forecast 0.43%. If we look back at yesterday uh, on the API report, the API report came out at a negative 5.2 million. So there is a distinct breakdown of what crude oil is expecting. Uh, the, the API is saying that this should be a pretty negative number while inventories is forecasting a positive 0.43 not likely going to be the case. So crude oil is likely going to be a bit more bullish. The numbers will probably come out on the negative side. Uh, maybe not as far as negative five, but maybe like a negative three or a negative two. But aside from the news, that's really all we've got going on for today. So it's pretty straightforward after that. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's jump into some charts for today's date. Oh, uh, let's see, 127 of 2021. First up to the party, we've got the NASDAQ. Uh, the NASDAQ overall has kind of a weird wedge. I'm not, <laughs> it, it's one of those wedges that you draw it a couple different ways. There's the interim low, which allows a nice little wedge, but then there's also the wider low. The problem with the wider low is it doesn't line up with anything. Uh, so that usually means that it'll wind up lining up with something else a little bit later on, but as it stands right now, we don't have anything to work with. So that gives us the narrower wedge base. With this big rotation to the upside, buyers attempted to break above the highs. The break above the highs didn't exactly stick the landing. Uh, it, it had a really strong attempt at the end of the day, and then lower high, lower high, failure, failure, and now it's starting to roll back over. Yes, we're in an L1 buy area for buyers near the lows of the range. There's a lot of things that would say that buyers want to buy the pullback here. Realistically speaking, though, the way that this stands, that breakout was really dirty. And a lot of times when you have a dirty breakout like that, they'll pull back to an L2, sometimes even lower, before finding some actual support. So although the buyers may try here, it might be a little too early for them. On the S&P, we have a fantastic sideways range going on with a beautiful bounce off that rising support. For the most part, the market is just chopping sideways. Did look like we had a falling wedge resistance. The market tried breaking above it, made a quick new high. It was all wick and then failed lower high, lower high, and now it's rolling over. Again, we're seeing kind of the same sentiment here in that this isn't good. <laughs> uh, it, this isn't what buyers want to see if they're going to try to continue the market back to the upside. This is the opposite of what they want to see. A lot of buyers may be looking to buy cheap, especially considering you know if they miss their opportunity back on the 25th, then buying a pullback, buying below 38.21, something like that, just buying on the cheap where possible is going to be the next route for them. And it's getting close, but it would be a lot nicer if it lined up with that rising channel support again, just to add that little bit extra uh, for a good one-two punch to get things moving. Then over on gold, we have more sideways action, but this one's pulling back a little bit. Everything seems to be relatively sideways, rangy trends, if that makes sense. Uh, the market's grinding its way down. Rising support was in the way, kind of breaking through it. I mean, realistically, it doesn't look like they paid too much attention to that rising support, which may mean that it's not there. Uh, that could give us a clue that there's something else, right? Maybe it, it, maybe it was this steep, and when they broke, it held, it held, and now it went out to here, and, and it broke, and they're maybe trying to get a backfill and a hold. Either way, the thing that is really standing out is that all of these formations are really ugly for the Bulls. The Bears, very obvious. There's no questioning what's going on from the Bears' perspective, but for the Bulls, they've got a lot of issues. 
from a channel perspective, one thing that lines up really nicely is the bottom of the channel, uh, which is also an L4 bounce back to the upside for buyers to try to kick this back up. Not to mention the fact that that's where all of that structure is. Everything is lining up with a little bit more of a down move first. Over on crude oil in a complete sideways choppy mess, we have the API report and crude oil inventories kind of waiting or looming in the background, which we already talked about. That's forecasted to be a bullish number, a negative number, meaning they have less than expected, so they have to drive prices up to slow down people buying it. Uh, well, that is, well, we're, we're seeing a bunch of consolidation. We're not really seeing one way or the other, uh, but... If we're looking at that through the lens of the API report, what's likely going to try to happen here is since we're still stuck in this 52, 53, 54 area, remember uh, a couple, it might've been a couple weeks ago now, we were talking about how this was a major target area and potential to hold the market down. The best the sellers will be able to hold for initially is a range. Well, they got the range. We're, we're going sideways. We're in the zone. This is where sellers, if they're going to try to push down, this is where they're going to do it. Everything lines up really, really nicely uh, to try to drive the market in a direction. And given the API report, it would be really nice to see a flush down and then see the buyers try one more time. It's progressive lower highs all the way through, so the bulls are obviously losing their grip. Uh, and if it breaks down really aggressively, <clears throat> more than just a wick like some of the other breakouts that we've seen this morning. If it breaks out aggressively to the downside, then we may be on the start to that drive back down towards the $50 mark. Maybe a little bit through it. That $50 mark is, has been and will probably always be a major psychological level. On the Euro, we have a failed launch attempt from the Bulls. Uh, we, we had this area of support that was the broken L1 that the buyers have been bouncing off of for quite a while. Sellers have been trying to get this move down. They failed. Now they're looking to exit a break even. That's what all these bounces are. But <laughs> the last time... Uh, short. It didn't make it to a new high. And then after that, we had a lower high, lower high, and a big rollover. Buyers may be, in all rights and regards, looking to accumulate this pullback. More realistically speaking, though, it would make a lot more sense if the buyers got a bit nervous. And they're not going to want to sell way down here. It's already way down here. This is where buyers are coming in. Um, but if it is going to go a little bit lower, guarantee there's going to be some stops under there. The question is, is it going to be enough to fuel a flush down through another stop run and trigger a cascade event where it swings all the way back down to the lows? Right now, buyers are still trying to defend this BL1, uh, the broken L1 trying to get that continuation back to the upside with upside objectives all the way at least back to 22 uh, maybe even a little bit further. But if they start losing ground here, that's where things change real fast. Switching gears over now to the cryptocurrency side of things with Bitcoin. And although we're switching markets, we're not switching sentiment. Completely dead flat sideways and not really a whole lot going on here either. Uh, it's still hovering around the 31,000 area. It's not really pulling back. It's not really lifting. It's had a couple attempts, but they've been false starts uh, that created the megaphone high over here on the 25th. So now that we have a megaphone, the market's waiting to drive back down to the lows. And the longer this takes, uh, honestly, it kind of becomes better because, well, while it's pinging around here, it's still got a lot of separation to the bottom of the, of the wedge. But if it takes its time, then it gets closer and closer and closer until all of the sudden, those two levels are lining up almost perfectly, creating a major zone of interest, uh, trying to ramp the market back again. So uh, right now we're in the middle. We're at the lows of the middle, kind of, sort of. It'd be nice if we were at the lows of the, of the megaphone. But there will be buyers who are trying to buy as the market's pushing back down, especially towards 30,000, big psychological level. From there, we'll have to wait and see what they want to do, if they're going to try to push the market back up again, or if it's going to need to slide a little bit further down towards maybe the 28s. And then finally, over on Ethereum, we've got a nice rally, but... That rally led into a new high. The new high was garbage. It, it didn't work at all. Uh, that new high broke and, well, 
it didn't stay very long before failing back down, resistance, resistance, resistance. Now it's cycling back down again. Uh, if the buyers are going to take it, this is going to be the area where they will likely come back in again. We're coming back to a previous major area of support resistance around this 1250. This is not the first time we've been talking about 1250. It's certainly not a stranger of an area. Uh, but there's nothing else structurally going on. It's not like we're at the bottom of a wedge or, or anything like that. The only thing that you might be able to pull, and it feels like it's pulling kind of just to make something work, uh, but would be the rising wedge support, something like that. The only reason that I like that one a little more and why I would even consider it is because that little wick back proved that same level. So... It's there, kind of, <laughs> but I would really like to see a bit more of a slide. It, it is, uh, you know, Ethereum, it's crypto we're talking here. These things can get really slippy. It would be awesome to see a slide down to the 1130s and then bounce it off of the lows of that support and rocket the market right back up again. All right, well, that's going to do it for today. Like we always say, stay safe out there, keep those stops in play, and let the winners run. I hope you have a fantastic trading day ahead, and as always, we will see you in the next one. Thanks.